versus react. Have you heard this word proactive? No. Right? You have heard about proactive. <coughs> proactive, reactive. These two words. Proactive means visualizing things which is needed and doing it well advanced in that. For example, let us say uh, whenever they construct a building, okay, proactively they have to have exit stairs. In, before there could be any damage or before there can be fire in a particular place, the engineers would want certain fire precaution things to be in the building. Okay? So that is proactive. For example, let's say you know that you know certain things have to be done and if you, if you, if you don't do it, there's going to be a loss for the company. So before I could tell you to do this, you have already done it. So that is proactive. Reactive means whenever there's a situation, okay, being very reactive to the situation, for example, if if somebody talks to you rudely, you don't think about anything else. Immediately you become back at Very reactive. You don't think about what are the consequences or how the relationship will be perfect. So that's reactive. So there is very much to very much importance on being proactive to be successful and to be within the 20% of the most successful people. Okay? Got it? <coughs> being proactive helps you focus on creating future opportunities for yourself and help you to be prepared for any situation. I think this is very clear what it is for. When you are reactive, we are doing what we are expected to do. Okay. So what happened is people may just, you know, now I want to make a fight with you. Okay. So I'll just go and start abusing him or use certain words which you do not like. Immediately what will he do? It will trigger anger on him. He will also start fighting. So this is a reaction. It's like, you know, he's not thinking about anything. Okay, let's do it. Whatever comes with it. But proactiveness, if I shout at him also, he will analyze why is he shouting? What is the problem? Okay? Should I shout back at him or should I go complain to his superiors? What needs to be done and how I can handle the situation better. So, as leaders, we should have a quality of proactivity. Okay, proactive. What do you mean, proactive? Done. Be proactive and leave a successful life. Now, in order to be proactive, what are these steps we need to follow? Okay, we have mentioned about. There are a lot of steps, but here we have mentioned. Think long term. Whenever there's a situation, a proactive mentality is to think long term game. Not a short term. Immediately you reacting it is a short term. Whatever it is, you have to think long term. So productivity, think long term. Second one is use time management skills. Okay? Third one is use the 80-20 rule. This is a rule which has been proved by management and a lot of other science, which is saying about you know 80% and 20%. Let's say 100% uh, thing that I should be working on. 80% might not be of a great use. But the 20% of the activity which we do is going to be of immense value and whatever we do. So pay attention on that 20% what we do. Got it? And here, share ideas with your team. Whenever you have some ideas, like how I'm asking you guys to make notes, ask questions, share your ideas. The more you share your ideas, the more wiser you become. Got it? And it helps you be proactive. Be prepared for anything. Life is not predictable. Anything can happen at any time. So a person who is proactive will always maintain his school and he can be prepared to face anything. Done? Great. So this is related to one section about active pieces. Today we will again talk about today's you know, uh, topic about leadership, successful secrets of self-made millionaires, leadership. Okay? So you guys ready? Yes. Let's think about the next leader who will okay? yes. on. D mark. Have anybody heard about D mark? No. You have heard of D mark? Okay, good. Okay. Now, basically, I'll explain to you. Okay, D mark is a hyper supermarket. Okay. This is found. The founder and owner is Radha Radha Krishnan Damani. Okay. So basically, what I want to tell you is this person, Radha Krishnan Damani, Damani, Damani. I'm sorry, I'm not able to pronounce it properly, but Radha Krishnan Dhamani. Is it correct? Yes. Okay, okay. Now, 
related to this person I want to tell you, he is actually the fourth richest man in India. Just think about it. Fourth richest man in India. We all have heard about Mukesh Amman, right? There are a lot of other successful richest people. Now I'm talking about the fourth richest man in India and he owns this company called as Kmart. Okay. Now we, we need to understand, right, how this person became so rich, right? We all want to be rich. Now, here you just understand a few tips, few understanding. Okay, these are details which I have understood with different uh, you know, learnings actually. There might be something in between, you know, maybe something is right or wrong. But these are what I understand. It's my personal opinion. Okay? You guys need to research more and find out more things on your project. So I'm just giving you an overall, overall idea of what this my understanding and take away so that I can share with you. First thing is, he is born on January 1954. Okay, quite a big And when he when he became big, he is he also was from a middle. Uh, what do you call this? this? Uh, you know this lifestyle, right? Middle class family. He was also a middle class family. And uh, like us, one of us at home, what requires for everything is done, parents are taking care. Everything is fine. But uh, you know he had that spirit that you know I can do something big in life, right? So anybody who's actually become big in life is actually thought in his mind that he wants to be big in life. Okay. For example, if you want to go to uh, let's say back home, only if you think you will go there. If you don't think, you will not even think about you know what is happening in Bangalore, what are the companies, nothing. So he had a vision that he wants to do big in life, not just stay in a middle middle class family, but he wants to grow up in life. Okay. So what he did is what we are going to the next thing. He started his you know, once he's finished his education now, he was not very much into, you know, uh, uh, more into, like, you know, top class, you know, high, uh, top rank in the class. He was an average student. He, he did well. But his vision and aim was business. But what attracted and where life took him was stock broker. Anybody knows what is stock broker? Stocks? Stock broker? Okay, we will discuss that more in detail. Okay. Stocks are up, but there are different companies. They actually, uh, you know, they have, have uh, stock, market. Stock, stock market. Okay, so stock market and then broker right? So other business in Moga are done. So his priority was he used to learn about the companies, which company, what company. His foundation of understanding business and the companies was in depth. His foundation is good. So as a stock broker, you need to know. Which are the companies working in your place? What are the companies? Where I can invest? Where I should be from? So he had certain learning. But overall, he understood this very clearly. As a broker, he's working for somebody else. But if he wants to be rich, he needs to invest his own money. Okay, so if we need to be rich, we got to invest our own money, right? The same thing he had, he thought of this one. Now what he thought is, he will start his own company. He worked for some of the companies, did not get there. But then he actually started this company what is hyper supermarket? Hyper supermarket demand. It was started, you know, a very long ago. That was in 2002. When he started this company, he only had one hyper supermarket. Okay. From 2002 to 2010, okay. So within the short period of time, we had 25 stores. 25 stores developed. In today, he has more than 200 stores all over India. Okay. Why and how he could actually get this business, right? From 1 to 25, 25 to 200 stores and he is the fourth richest person in India. Okay. So this is how the story begins. As a stock broker, he was, he understood that education and understanding the market is very important. Right? So he spent time on understanding the basics of the business. Now he had a vision of starting a hyper supermarket or a supermarket, whatever it is. But he wanted a model which is not very commonly practiced in India. Right? So what he did is he went to the USA. Okay? He, 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 he went to the US and there there is Walmart. Everybody has heard about Walmart? Walmart. Oh, yeah. That's a big super chain, right? Supermarket, it's a very big project. He went there to US and he studied in detail how they operate, what are the business techniques, what are the products. So what we learn from here is we need to be experts on business, what we do, we need to learn first. So he actually took this principle 
when he was learned all the business rules about Corona. Then he came back to India. Once he had come back to India, he started this particular supermarket called SP1. Okay. So the value and principles are all, every business has certain values and ideas to be successful. So we will discuss few points which was helpful. That were, there were many. Okay. So a few points which I want to tell you is there are few strategies for this success. Okay. Number one is this. Okay, sell products to sell products at a low cost. Let's say he, he wants he Vmart's main motto is to keep the product at the lowest cost possible compared to any other competitors. Okay. So whenever you go, you go to that particular place, you know that I am getting the best low price. Right? Now, how did you now how did he get this lowest price? Now he has a shop, he has a shop, he has a shop. You're giving it as a lowest price. How he gave you, gave you this lowest prices? He follows a little challenge. Okay. These are he, he kept a lot of strategies. We will discuss them in detail, but we'll go step by step. Okay. Quality product, low price. Whatever product you buy from that place, it's of a good quality. It's not that cheap. It is okay. The money what you pay, it's worth it. Okay. So he, he made that as one of these strategies. Second strategy is called as slotting fee. This is actually in every supermarket there are slot, you know, there's particular counters. When I enter the particular supermarket, as soon as I enter, there's all shelves. Then there's shelves, shelves, shelf. Now if you come to me and tell me that you have a product, you, let's say you have chips. Okay, I'll tell okay, I'll place it in this friend's shelf. As soon as customer comes, I'll see this friend's shelf, but you need to give me the rent. So the place which I have your products get, I take the rent from you. So that is an uh, advantage. Now, second thing is, since I am already taking rent from this place, okay, for, from that store, I'm, give, I'm making it, and then this products are there. Now, those products, I'll again sell it for much lesser price than the competitors. Margin is less, but I still sell it in a lesser price. So what happens when you sell it for a lesser price? The volume of customers buying the product is much higher. Okay. In India, you know about it, the lower the price, <coughs> the sale of the product is much higher according to the particular strategy. So people who actually, you know, the, it's not everywhere, but credit cards and you know, they for the money is, every uh, money is very much counted, right? So they don't mind going and staying in the line for a long time. So he made that as one of his strategies. Third one is strong control on operation expenses. When I say strong control on operations expenses, what are the operation expenses? Operation, when you are when running a particular work, there are a lot of expenses. One is electricity, you know, there's a lot of extra expenses. The data, uh, when you come into the place, how the place looks like, right? So, DMART, comparing to other supermarkets, it's not very exclusive. They don't buy the, uh, you want to come here? Okay. So, that, that's where, uh, let's focus. Let's, let's focus, okay? Demand does not make uh, their places very, very uh, you know, exclusive, like you know, other you know, grand entrance or having sofas for people to sit and all this stuff. Demand makes it very simple. It's cost effective. There will be cashier counters also very minimum. You know, maybe you can cashier counters, but that means less cashier, less salary to be given to the uh, less machines to be needed. But you, customers don't mind standing the line because cost is low, product is low, okay? So, overall operation expense has been controlled very well. Okay, whether it is uh, the tech, uh, it, it would be like, you know, the Mela, every uh, Sundays, every few days, there are, you know, there's a lot of exhibitions. So, they are not bothered about prices, but they are bothered about, bothered about the price of the goods. So, they were very much focusing on this. Next one is, payment done on time, to the vendors. This is very, very important. If you don't pay your vendor, now I'm taking one from you, and if I don't pay you, tomorrow you will delay the supply. So demand has a reputation of paying it on time. Okay. So comparing to other chains of other world supermarkets and all this stuff, they are very, very precise of the payment. If you give me, they will work out a day. Okay. One week is the maximum time. They don't extend it very long. You give me the product, I will sell it within a week, I will get you uh, Payment. Because they have the full confidence that 
any product you give me, I can sell much, much faster. And they have proven it to be successful, and the payment is much faster, and all vendors prefer to provide them the goods. Now here, the vendors are very happy. They have taken care very well. Okay? This is a relationship. Remember, I used to talk about uh, you know, uh, relationship or uh, related to uh, we call it as how you maintain your uh, people, right? If you treat your employees very well, your company will grow. If you treat your vendors properly, your business will grow, right? So they, they actually practice this very well. Next is share market. Sell them, okay, since he was a broker in stocks, okay, he, this company is already in the shares, okay? Now, he knows when to purchase the products and when to sell. Normally, whenever the uh, you know, sales are very high in the stock market, right, he would sell the stocks. And then it is very low, buy the stocks. Okay. So that is also giving him a lot of money. Right? Next is partner with the partners. This is very important. Partner with the partners means, now you are my partner. You are giving me some goods, but I am having partnership with you. Which means what? I am having a very good relationship with you. And we are having a lot of mutual understanding. Now from here also, there is two negotiations which makes money. Okay. Here, when you say partner with the partner, how I get money is, I tell them, okay, now these goods are there. Right? Now when I have these, uh, these goods, I am taking these goods from you. And I, when I give him cash immediately, he will give me some discount. Right? Anywhere it is. If I, the faster I give you money, you will give me a discount. So the first, first uh, option on being a partner with a partner is I'll take money from you, give me a discount since I'm giving you money on time. I'm giving you fast cash payment or on time payment within a week pay payment, which is much faster than computer. So he will give me a discount, number one. Number two is volume discount. Everybody knows that when we buy a product in large volume, you get a discount. Right? So again I tell him. Now I'm going to buy in large bulk quantities for so a discount. So you will give me two discounts. One is one discount considering I'm giving you fast cash transaction or a money transaction or cash or online order. Within a week you're getting money back. So you will give me a discount. Second is bulk discount. Now when I buy one kg of price, the price is going to be like whatever 20 rupees. If I buy 20 kg of price, same thing I get it for 5 rupees. So bulk discount also there. Now internally we get brought revenue from here. Again from here we sell the product much lesser cost to the customers, making a you know, minimum of 5% margin. But the volume of customers is so huge that 5% actually turns out to be a very huge success for them. Okay? Guys, we got the points all clear? Okay. Now these are the main points today, but we have a lot more to discuss uh, further as well, but we'll go step by step. Okay? Any questions we will discuss right now. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Nice.